Welcome to another Quick Queries video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Quick Queries are basically a bunch of questions and comments and stuff that get posted on my website and on my YouTube channel, and we just go over them all and we have fun. So let's get to it. Uh, we got a question from N269. Um, on a split database, can you determine if anyone is using the split data? Enjoying these extremely interesting nuances to access. Thank you. Yeah, actually you can. Um, if you want to see who's currently got access to the backend file, with a split database, access creates a lock file. Here's my server folder, for example. Now I got multiple different databases with, um, with different split files in them. But for example, one is my 599 CD sales tables database that includes like the customer table. Actually, no, that doesn't include the customer table. That's in this one. This includes some other order information and stuff like that. But here is a lock file. It's an LACCDB file, okay? If this file exists, that means someone has that table open. And if you want to see who it is, open it up in Notepad. It's just a text file. I'm going to double click on it. Oop, it opened up on my other screen. I'll bring it up here and look. I can see that. Now, it's not perfect, but you can see, right? There's server admin and Picard admin. I have it open on my server. And my local workstation's name is Picard. And in both cases, I'm admin. And so you can see who's got it open. And I just logged out on my Picard machine. And now if I open it back up again, let's see. And there you can see it's just the server now because I logged out of Picard. So that's all those files are. Now I wouldn't go try to manipulate those files yourself, but if you wanna read it in as text then you can just look for the machine names, you'll know what user's in it, right? And um, in the old days when Access actually had user level security built into it, um, you could assign people different usernames, but now everyone will just show up as admin. So you'll just be able to rely on the, the computer name that you see in there. But it's still pretty cool. I mean, especially if you know what computer names are allowed on your network, you can open that up and say, hey, if I, if I see Picard in there, I mean, then I know Picard's in it and you know who's on that machine. And there's lots of different ways you can do it. I have my own methods of seeing who's in the database. And I cover all of that in my security seminar. I show you how to set up username and password logons, lock down your database. You can control who's got access to what, keep a system log of who did what, all that stuff. So check it out if you wanna learn more. So last month I accidentally posted a video with something different. A quick queries was I think compact on close or something like that. And one thing I love about you guys is at least 50 people pointed it out to me. So thank you very much. I'm not annoyed at all. I appreciate it. If you find any problems with my videos, post a comment, let me know. But I would also ask, look and see if someone else posted the same comment first. All right. There's no, there's no need to you know, tell me 18 times. It's like that scene from Office Space, right? If I mess up, I got 15 bosses that let me know about it. 15 <laughs> or whatever number it was. That sounds like someone's got a case of the Mondays. Oh, and in case you missed it, I recently got myself a copy of The Stapler, Milton Stapler, right, from Office Space. I posted about it in my captain's log. If you're not following the captain's log, uh, it's just a page on my website where I try to post something, you know, every day or at least a couple times a week, different stuff. It's not all computer related. Some of it is, some of it's access related. You know, it's philosophy and science and whatever else I happen to be thinking about. So check it out. I'll put a link to that down below too. Next up, Fred Wild. Why won't access display multiple columns in a combo box? The wizard can select several fields, but the combo box won't display them. Odd. Fred, you are literally posting the question on the video that answers that question. The multiple fields in a combo box video. I do agree, though, that this should be easier for beginners to figure out. They should make an option in the wizard itself. Would you like to see these as one field when the box is closed? All right, this is the video. Normally, if you pull in, let's say first name and last name, you'll only see one of those. Like here's, I did last name first, right? So when the box is closed, you'll only see one of them. You can see multiple columns when the box is open or when you click on it and open it up, you can see a bunch of stuff. But if you want those to appear together, you gotta use a query before that, which I show you in this video. See, we use a little query and a little concatenation to put together last name and first name in one field. Then you use that query to feed the combo box. I know it's a couple more steps. And again, I wish that the access team would make this easier for beginners, but that's what I'm here for, is to teach us stuff like that, right? They don't wanna put me out of a job. <laughs> if access was too easy, I'd have nothing to do all day long. 
And I like what I do. Next up, Bright Men's asks, how do I hide only tables without the forms being hidden? Well, part of what I try to teach you guys is that you don't want your users having any access whatsoever to the navigation pane. And I think in my simple security video, I show you how to hide it. Because if they can get in here, they can start doing crazy stuff. So you want to give them an ACCDE file so it's encrypted. Um, execute only is what it technically stands for, but I call it encrypted. And, um, and, and you're going to lock this down. So this is completely hidden and they can't get in there. You're going to, you're going to give them access to whatever forms you want them to have access to by making buttons for it on a menu. And again, I cover all of this in my videos. Now, with that being said, you can hide these objects, but anybody who knows how to unhide them can easily unhide them. Like for example, want to hide a table, right click, hide in this group. Right or right click, go to properties, and then you can hide it there. And now it's hidden. See? But anybody who knows how to go to, where's the navigation options up here, right? Click navigation options. They can show hidden objects and now there they are. Right? So it's, it's one of those features that's good enough to kind of hide it from Aunt Sally who doesn't know access. But anybody who kind of knows access can easily figure out where that stuff is. That's why in my seminars, I show you how to lock all that stuff down so they can't get in there at all. Okay? Okay. Next up, Mark wants to know, is there a way of making the form pop up only with a right click in the location of the mouse as opposed to a control? Yeah, sure. Um, you'd have to disable the default pop-up menu, which isn't hard to do, and then just pop up your own control wherever wherever that is. Um, here, let me show you. So if you want to disable the pop-up menus for the whole database, you can go into options and then under current database, you can find, where is it? Let's see, uh, right here. Allow default shortcut menus, you can turn that off. Um, but if you want them in most of your database, but you just want to disable them on a particular form so this thing doesn't pop up, then you can use a little bit of code in the onload event, for example, all you got to say is um, it's me dot shortcut menu equals false. Now, the, now the, the right click shortcut menu for that whole form will be disabled, but just that form. Right. So if I right click, nothing happens. I'm right clicking now. Okay. Right click, right click, right click, nothing, but it still works out here. Okay. Now. You can capture see, but see also you can't go into design mode in here either now. <laughs> so you gotta come back out here and right click out here and design. That's why I don't like turning it off for the whole database. Um, so let's say you wanted to have a right click menu of your own for the notes box. You can do it for any box you want or even the background of the form, uh, but you have to do it that way. Um, so in here, Let's bring up this guy's properties and you're going to look for the mouse down event. That's what happens when you click either one of the buttons over that field. Now, how do you know which button it is? Well, there's the button, there's the shift, and then there's the X and Y. Okay. The button is which button you click on. So here's what, here's what we'll do. We'll message box button. All right. And then. And then, right, click. That's one is the left button, and two is the right button. Let me see. Yep, four is the, the mouse scroll wheel button. Okay. Um, so now that we know that, we can say, you know, if it's two, we can just say if the button equals two, then that's a right click. And just, you know, pop up your message, pop up your form, whatever you want to do here. Um, I'll just say message box, uh, here's your menu, right? And shift, by the way, will track if the user is holding down the shift control or alt keys so that you, you can do like a, a control right click and then X and Y obviously are the coordinates. So now I can right click and there's your menu. And of course you'd position it up here. There's a lot you can do with it. Um, I do cover building custom right-click pop-up menus. Like you can see over here, there's Rick's function, right? Joe's function. Um, it's, it's pretty involved and it does, uh, uh, it does involve using the ribbon. You have to make custom, basically custom ribbon stuff. But uh, it's part of my series on customizing the ribbon and the right-click pop-up menus. It's an advanced developer lesson, but if you want to learn how to do that, check it out. 
but you could use that technique that I showed you just to do the same thing and mix that with the pop-up menu uh, video that you were talking about. This guy that auto automatically will pop up over the control. So you, you kind of got most of it there. I honestly, in my years, in my 20 plus years of uh, building databases as an access consultant, I think I had maybe two clients who really wanted a custom ribbon and, and custom pop-up right-click right menus. Most of them just don't care. So I, I, I've never used it for my own purposes either. I mean, I've, I've taught it and I've, I've used it for clients, but very rarely do people actually need that. Uh, I've started encountering access crashing as soon as I open any text or Excel file after last week's update. Well, yeah, it, you got to roll back after that. If it's still doing it, even after you've rolled back to a previously known issue, sometimes um, from what, and this is uh, this is purely anecdotal, I, I have no proof of this, but I believe that sometimes when you install an update, it, it installs new pieces, parts in there that even a rollback doesn't get rid of. Like there's some like system level things that might get updated that yeah, you might need to completely uninstall Office and then install an older version. Because I've, I've had that happen too, where it just kind of corrupted things. I'd roll back and it still was corrupted and I knew it was working fine that morning. But it could also be your database. It could be something changed. I, I don't know. Without sitting down behind your computer, I really can't tell you. That's one of the problems. So what do we do in a case like this? Well, we run down my troubleshooter. Start from the top, run down it, and hopefully it'll figure out your problem. There's a video here you can watch, covers most of them. I tried to arrange these in the order you should try them from, from easiest and most likely to fix problems to the more difficult ones, right? And, and some things in the middle you should check. Like just even rebooting the PC sometimes. You'd be surprised how many times I had problems that I couldn't figure out why is it behaving this way Reboot the PC, you know, give give Windows a fresh boot. I don't mean just, you know, put it in standby and wake it back up again. I mean, do a system restart and um, that fixes the problems, believe it or not. So give it a try. Run down the troubleshoot. There's a lot of stuff on here to try. Uh, Etolica says, of course, I'd like more word lessons. And I mean, actual developer lessons where you could teach us how to intensively use Word together with Access. Yeah, I'm I'm planning on making some. Um, I've been wanting to completely redo my Word and Excel classes and PowerPoint. Uh, I've just been, you know, just so busy keeping up with just doing the access videos. <laughs> I need to clone myself. I need like three of me. But I'm going to try and get ahead on the, the access tech help videos because I, I still am going to release, you know, even when, I, even when I start doing more Word and Excel and stuff like that, access is always going to be my focus. So I'm still going to release, you know, at least three or four access videos a week. But uh, I, I want to start adding in some Word and Excel too. And, and yeah, there's a lot you can do with automation between Access and Word and Excel and, and lots of cool stuff. So if you want to see more uh, Word and Excel and stuff like that videos, post a comment down below. And the squeaky wheel gets the grease. The more people that want it, the more likely I'll be to make a new video on that topic, right? Okay. Here's an older comment from Shadow Dragon that I missed from a couple months ago. Uh, you planning on doing something special for Quick Queries 42? Yeah, I missed a golden opportunity there. Uh, and I, I, yeah, 42, that would have been funny. Um, but I will do something special for Quick Queries 1701 and Quick Queries 2112. So look for something special for those. And if I do one a week and my math is right, 1701 will be in 1647 weeks. So that's 31 years from now. So that's what, the year 2056? So we'll get there. We'll get there. We will definitely get there. Okay? Okay. Mark my words. Like I said before, I think I mentioned this last week, uh, I have to make it at least to see the next Haley's Comet in 2061. And I'll be, what, 89 years old? 88 years old? So I I'll be still doing this, folks. I ain't going anywhere. I just love it when you guys quote movie quotes back to me. I love it. I'm a big movie quote guy, especially from the nerdy movies that I like. Who is your daddy and what does he do? I'm a big Schwarzenegger fan. Uh, back to a real question. <laughs> uh, can you think of any examples when you would use the remember the value for later use when building a drop down box? Yes, all the time. Um, you're going to store the value in a table or query when you want to pick something and have it stored in the table that's underneath it. For example, in a tech help query, uh, tech help template, uh, if you have an order, this is a bound combo box because you're going to pick a, a customer and it stores it in the table. Now, when might you want to just pick a value and then do something with it later? 
Well, the perfect example is something that I showed in the member version, right? You go to your customers, you go to your orders. Down here, we have a combo box where we can pick a product. Now, this is not bound to the table. It just sits there. It's an unbound combo box, right? And if you want to use the wizard to build it, you would, you would use that option. Just remember the value for later use. Why? Because we're going to do something with it. We're going to make a button that's going to add it to the product, to the invoice here. See, that's what this is. It's an unbound combo box. And it doesn't, it doesn't save its value directly in the table because we want to copy it up here. And the reason why we're doing that is because we have a product table that has products and a cost and a markup and a unit price. And this cost can change from time to time. So we don't want to store this record in the order. We're going to copy the data, right? We're going to copy the data up here because this might change. We might even give the, the customer, you know, a, a better price, right? But we can pick a product like a photon torpedo and add it. And now it's copied up here. So if the original photon torpedo changes, it doesn't adjust all of your existing orders. So that's when you would use a combo box that doesn't save it in the table. And I hope that answers your question. And that example is covered in the members edition of the invoicing video, which is the extended cut right there that you can get by being a silver member. And you can watch that whole thing. How long is that? That's a pretty long video. Okay, yeah. members, Whoa. get ready. Oh, sorry about that. That's another hour long video where we go through lots of stuff. So it's really good. And with that, we're going to call to a close. This or, this uh, this uh, court is now no longer in session. What do they say? Oh, court is adjourned at the end. Court is the quick queries court is adjourned for the for the week. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you learned something. I had fun. Uh, live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.